Hi guys, this is Cadence with McCarroll Photography and I am back with another quick and easy Photoshop tutorial for you guys. This one was actually requested. I'm going to show you how to do a sky overlay in Photoshop. As always, you're going to start by opening the image you want to work on. I chose this one because I love the shot, but the sky that day was just really overcast and blah. So I want to jazz it up by adding a sky overlay. Now you can use any sky image you want as your overlay. I am going to use this one, which I got from pixabay.com. It's a free stock website. And you're going to select your sky image, copy it, and paste it over the image you want to work on. Or you can drag and drop if you're the drag and dropping sort. And then you're going to just position your sky where you think it should go. I'm going to put mine right there. And now what you're going to do with that sky layer selected is you're going to go up to the blend options menu and you're going to select multiply. And do you see how now our subjects are visible through the sky? All these little details like these blades of grass are visible through the sky, but it's really dark because that's what the multiply mode does. It makes everything really dark. So to fix that with our layer selected, we're going to go up here to image adjustments levels. And we're going to take this right slider and just brighten the image as much as we want. I'm also going to take the middle one and drag it over too, just to brighten it a little bit more. I think that looks pretty good. So click OK and see how we've brightened the image, but we still have this harsh line down here where we pasted the sky and we want to get rid of that. So what we're going to do, again with your layer selected, is we're going to go down here to this little square with the circle inside it. That's the Add Layer Mask button. We're going to click on that, and now with our new layer mask selected, we're going to go over to our gradient tool, make sure the first option is selected, and we're also going to make sure that our color is set to black, because when we are in layer mask mode, black is what's going to take stuff away. White adds and black takes away, and we want to take away that harsh line. So make sure that your color is set to black. Then what you're going to do, is you're just going to click down here and click and drag upwards, not all the way to the top, but maybe like, I don't know, like there. And do you see how that gr black gradient just naturally took away that horizon in a very soft way? So we went from that to that, but now you'll still notice that there's still some dark sky over our subjects, and we want to get rid of that as well. So with our layer mask still selected, we're going to go over to our brush tool, again making sure that our color is still set to black. We're going to use our br brush tool and we're just going to paint out where we don't want to see that dark sky. So like their clothes, their skin, their hair, or if you're not working on a portrait, if you're working on something else, and just basically anywhere where you don't want sky to be. So do, 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 paint, paint, paint. Make sure that your brush is sized appropriately because if you use a brush that is too small, it'll take forever. And if you use a brush that is too big, look, like if I make it bigger and do that, then look at that weird white haloing that we get. And we don't want to do that either. So just make sure your brush is appropriately sized while you do this. I might still get a little bit of haloing here just because I'm not being super precise for the sake of time. I'm not being real precise. So I am getting a little bit of haloing just from my own haste. But we're going to fix that. We can blend out any harsh haloing lines that we get by selecting our brush and lowering our opacity. I usually pick about 30 whenever I'm lowering my opacity. I don't know why. It's just like my magic number. And then we're going to make our brush really big and just brush over our entire, all like all of our subject right there. And do you see how that kind of softened it? And it's kind of blending it out a little bit more. So over this haloed area, I'm just going to kind of blend it a little bit more. And so do you see how it went from, let's see, that to that? And now that haloing isn't quite as noticeable. There we go. There we go, that looks nice. And now what you're going to do to finish it all off is you're going to unselect the layer mask and select the normal layer. And you're going to go to the opacity 
and you're just going to lower the opacity to where you think it looks good. I think it looks pretty natural right there. So we started with this and we ended up with this and now from here you can either leave it as it is or you can go ahead and edit the photo as you normally would. I like to do my sky overlays as one of the first steps because that way I can go ahead and flatten the image and then edit the photo as I normally would because that way any edits I apply to the original image also get applied to the sky overlay and it helps make it look like one cohesive image as if it were shot that way. But you can leave it like this if you want to. All right, it was just that easy and I hope this was helpful for you guys and thank you so much for watching. All right, bye.